Hey everyone, it is Angie Morgan Wachowski. Hope you are having a great Monday morning, that you're off to a start that is inspiring to your week, because that's why I'm here too. Because if not, I want to get you there with these Monday morning live conversations. So just for background, if we've never really met before, just a reminder, I'm the New York Times bestselling author of Spark, Bet on you and leading from the front. And for the past 20 years, I've been helping leaders like yourself. And by the way, if you don't consider yourself a leader, just know that I do. I define a leader not by positional authority. I define it as someone who influences and inspires. So you don't need a title to call yourself a leader. I think you're a leader. I learned how to lead during the Marine Corps and have since applied that guidance to all facets of my life. And that is why I'm here. I want to share these leadership concepts really self-leadership concepts with you in order for you to help live your best life. And I believe that is totally possible. And it starts with this. This is our first Monday Morning Live, and I want to start at the foundation. I want to help you get that vision for you. A personal vision is so critical to living an inspired life. Believe me, I know, because I know what a lack of vision feels like. Let me set the stage for you. So when I was a young, you know, training to become lieutenant, so candidate, a Marine Corps candidate for this officer program, one of the things I hated most, and believe me, I hated many things about training, but one of the things I hated most about training was running. Now, I'm a runner. I love to run. That's what I now do on my free time. I choose to run. But back then, let me describe the scenario. We would wake up super early. And we'd get outside in the dark and we'd get into formation. And our instructors would say, right face, forward march, double time, and we would head off into the woods. Now, the thing that sucked the most was that we were never really told how long we were going to be there, how far we were going to run, what our destination was. But there was one thing I can always count on. About a, you know, 20, 30 minutes into the run, I would start to have this mental thought loop that was negative. It would start with, ugh, this is awful. How long are we going to be out here? My knees hurt. I'm starting to smell. It was, it was awful. And then we'd get done. Now, mind you, in the Marine Corps, this was designed on purpose. They were teaching us that we were supposed to endure in areas of uncertainty. And I want to take this to the private sector. Again, we were training for combat back then, but now in the real world, that lack of vision, that lack of not knowing our destination, that's not training for combat. For far too many of us, we call that business as usual. And I want to change that. I once heard, which I do believe is very true, People who have a vision don't get burnt out. They get tired. That is how critical a vision is to our life. So if we know where we're going, enduring is possible because we know that in order to get there, that's how we're going to thrive in life. So life should not be an endurance sport. Life should be an experience where we set ourselves up for positions and opportunities to thrive. I'm going to give you three ideas this morning to help you think about where to begin to develop that vision for you. I wrote about this in my book, Bet on You. It's this three-step process. It's called dream it, own it, and take it. Let's start with dreaming. One of the biggest problems that we as a society have right now is we are not daydreaming. Sure, we're also not getting enough sleep, so we're not getting enough REM sleep, so we're not actually having like these powerful creative evening dreams. But I want to go back to during the day. When we have free time, we're not letting our minds be unmoored to just really imagine what a future could look like for us, what a better world could look like. Because when we have free times, we're, we're doing this, right? We're on our phones. We're scheduling. We're talking. We're looking at social media, we're getting a lot of recommendations and inputs for what we should be doing with our time, with our resources, all sorts of things. And what we're losing in this distraction device is the sense of self-authored living. I love this word authority. Notice that it has the word author in it. Well, we are the authority on how we should be directing our lives. So in order to dream, Dreams have to come from us. Sure, we can take recommendations and input from the outside world, but start with you because your dreams 
are powerful indicators for what your future holds. Your dreams tell you what your vision for you is. It shares with you what's possible and what's probable on this amazing journey called life. So give yourself permission to dream and what this looks like. When you go to a park bench, when you go for a walk, put the device down. Be with your quiet mind. Let that just silence, even though it might be a little different and uncomfortable for you, let it be filled just with ideas of what could be better for you. And don't judge what comes into your mind, just pay attention to it. Spend some time journaling and writing too. That is a wonderful clarifying process. This next thing, think about your book of life. Think about everything that you've done that got you to this point that you found joy in. I bet if you were to read your book of life and look at all the highlights, what you might uncover is a, is a pattern, is a theme. Like I really enjoy to do X, Y, and Z in life and go with it because I know your two-year-old self knew exactly what they wanted to do in life, who they wanted to be. They certainly weren't exposed to the range of options opportunities and possibilities, but they had a sense of self-authority. They had a sense of self-direction. So honor that younger version of yourself and really trust that what brought you joy in your past probably is going to bring you joy in your future and help paint that better picture of what is possible for you and recognize you can't just do this on an hour break on a Thursday. This is a process. Give yourself time and space. So dream it. And the next thing you must do is what you are starting to discover about you really understand that you have to own your dreams. When we own things, we take care of them very differently, right? Than when we rent things. Like think about if you've been in a rental car recently, I travel a lot and I hate to admit this out loud, but in rental cars, sometimes I'll leave my Panera bag in the car. Sometimes I'll leave my Starbucks coffee in the carrier there when I turn it in somebody else's problems. I, I know I probably shouldn't do that. And I'm just telling you here that that might happen sometimes or even in a hotel room. When I rent a hotel room, I might leave a damp towel on the floor, or leave it in the tub. I don't do that at my house. I own my house and we own things. We treat them very differently. And so here's what that means when it comes to our dreams and our visions or these is ideas that are coming to us. We can't delegate that to our spouse. We can't you know, tell our kids, hey, take care of this for me. We can't expect our employer to facilitate those dreams. We have to. These are our dreams. Nobody is going to care as much about your vision for you as you should. So own it. This final step of guidance, take it. Just take it. Don't wait. You know, you're never going to have enough money. You're never going to have enough time. You're never going to have enough of whatever you think it is in order to start living your life as you hope and intend it to look like. Now is that time. Today, every single day, we can take small baby step opportunities in order to fulfill our personal vision for ourselves. I love this topic so much because I firmly believe that we can design our lives we don't have to quit our jobs to change our lives. It often just starts with changing our mindset. It's getting more in touch with our vision for ourselves. And once we get that, I mean, everything changes. We have up to 60,000 thoughts per day. 85% are repetitive, 90% are negative. Often our world is consumed and our mind is consumed of negative repetitive thoughts. So if we wanna change anything, change our thoughts, align our subconscious thinking to our conscious thinking, to our vision for ourselves, everything changes. And I want that for you. We get to choose our own adventure in life. And starting with our thoughts that become beliefs, that become behaviors, we get to choose our thoughts. So for this week ahead, please be intentional. And you are not alone. I am here with you. Please go to angieconnect.com. You're going to find a host of resources that are going to be available to you. And I also have an e-course called Now It's Time for You. And this e-course is all about 
allowing you to take a process on a journey to get you to a position where you get to transform your career. I just want to thank you, everybody, for your time and attention this Monday morning. Please follow me on LinkedIn, Instagram, go to angieconnect.com, get access to the resources I have for you because I believe in you and I want you to be living the life of your dreams. Have a great morning, guys. Have a great week.